Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we are going to talk about edge detection. Now, if you followed me through this series, we're working toward some artificial intelligence functionality here in our Java programming. But basically, we're starting out with some fundamental image technology, learning how to write simple algorithms using the buffered image library in Java. And we're building on that. We're, we're adding different image filters. And in the last video, we learned how to write a Gaussian blur for uh, images. So you can blur an image to reduce the amount of detail in the image. In this video, you're going to learn how to do edge detection. It's a very important algorithm in uh, artificial intelligence because edge detection is needed to pick out features from an image. So that's what we're going to use it for later. Let's take a look at how it works. First, we're going to detect horizontal edges and vertical edges. We're going to apply our algorithm to the image twice to detect both of these. And how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to look at six pixels at a time. We're going to look at six pixels because we're looking for, when we do horizontal edge detection, we're looking for a horizontal edge between these three pixels on the top and the three pixels on the bottom. So we're going to do a calculation here using the, the, the grayscale value. We've got a grayscale image on a scale of 0 for black to 255, which is white. And we're going to do a calculation on that. Um, plus 1 times the weight of this pixel, plus 2 times the weight of this pixel, which is in the middle, plus 1 times the weight of this pixel, which is on the, the edge. And then negative the pixel values for these three pixels. And the reason we're using negative is because we're looking for ones that have a big gap between these three pixels and these three pixels. We're looking for where there's a big gap between them. In other words, a, a large distance between these two pixels, these two pixels, and these two pixels. And we weight it more towards the center because this center pixel is the most important one. And then in the vertical edge detection, we do the same thing. We're looking again for three pixels that have to the right of them, three other pixels with a large gap, a big color gap between them, right? So if this one is zero and this one is 255, that's a big gap. So that's going to be a big gap there. And we're going to calculate this gap for these six pixels so that we can figure out if there's actually an edge here. If they're all the same color, if all six pixels are the same color, the differences are going to be zero. It's going to be very low. So there'll be that means basically there's no difference, uh, no change in color between the left pixels and the right pixels. We're looking for ones where there's a rapid change in color between the left pixel and the right uh, pixel. So for example, in this 25 pixel image, let's say five by five pixels, and uh, we have grayscale values ranging, ranging from 0 to 255. And we can see that there is no more than about a 5 grayscale value difference between neighboring pixels for these three columns on the left here, right? They're all relatively close. There's not much change. But then when you jump across this edge here, it jumps up by about 100, doesn't it? So that is a vertical edge. There's a big change in grayscale between here and here, between the left and the right. And we can see that. And that's what we're looking for in our algorithm. So what we're going to do is compare six pixels at a time, right? We're going to calculate six pixels at a time, two columns of three cells. And then we're going to take the difference of those. And it won't matter whether it's positive or negative. So it won't matter if the dark is on the left or the dark is on the right or whatever. Uh, we're just looking for ones where there's a big difference between them because we're going to square that difference So it's going to become positive anyway And then we're going to do the same thing to detect horizontal edges And we're going to combine the vertical values with the horizontal values To condense it to a single value for edge detection that we can uh, display as an image So this will uh, allow us to calculate that and then when we get the horizontal edge detection done and the vertical edge detection done on all of the pixels in the image, what we're going to do next is calculate the Euclidean distance using the horizontal pixel value and the, and the vertical value. We're going to take basically x squared plus y squared square root. It's the same thing as uh, Pythagorean, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
So we're going to calculate the Euclidean distance. That way, if there's a really large horizontal, um, horizontal gap or a very large vertical change, right, the, those will both be normalized into a Euclidean distance to a single value for us. Now let's take a look at how that is coded. There's only 20 lines of code here in Java, so don't panic. It's pretty simple. First we applied the blur. Also, if you saw my last video, you'll see that we also created a heavy blur function for a, um, for a deeper Gaussian blur. And so we'll show you the difference later in this video, after we get the code written, how, how the level of blur affects our edge detection. So first let's just call a new function called detect edges, and then we'll display the result. So let's scroll down here. We're going to write our um, grayscale image edge detection right here. We're going to use, this is called the Sobel algorithm that I just explained how it works. And the function header uh, returns a buffered image, it receives a buffered image. And we're going to uh, use variables h for the height of the existing image and w for the width of the existing image. We have this interesting variable here called threshold. Uh, and I'll explain that when we get down to it. Uh, and then the p, which we've used in other videos, which is the pixel weight value. We're going to create a new uh, buffered image object called edge image. So we want that to be the same height and width as the original image. And it's going to be grayscale. And then when we're all done, we're going to do some calculation in here using nested for loops to access each pixel. And then we're going to return our edge image that we create. So right now we have a blank canvas. We're going to override data to it that we're going to calculate. So to calculate this, I showed you that we need to calculate both vert and horizontal. That's going to be a grid. So we are going to use a 2D integer array using the width and height. And then the edge weight will be the calculated Euclidean distances. So these are kind of interim distances that we need to get to the edge weight, which uh, we'll just call it edge weight. That's, that's our Euclidean distance that we're going to use. So our nested for loops that we've been using for pretty much all these videos to iterate through the pixels. We iterate through all the rows and columns of the image. And then our equation. So we're first going to calculate the vert, and then we'll calculate the horizontal. And like I showed you, we're going to, we need to calculate positive values for uh, three pixels. Since this is vert, um, we want three pixels up and down, right? So we have three pixels there. The y values have a negative one, a y, and uh, a plus one. And then we do on subtracting, same line here, we're subtracting the three rows um, to the right of that. So yeah, we have x minus one, x minus one, x minus one are going to be the negative values. And it won't matter whether you get a positive or a negative value for this because we're going to square it when we take the Euclidean distance. So don't worry about whether which one should be positive and which one should be negative. When you square things, it's, it's all going to come up positive. So that is our equation for the vertical edge detection. We use exactly the same thing for horizontal, except it's rotated 90 degrees. And then we take those vertical and horizontal values, we square them, add them together, and then take the square root to get the edge weights. So that's just x squared plus y squared uh, equals edge weight squared. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now what we have is a bunch of edge weights. We want our result to be every pixel is either black for no edge detected or a white dot where we think there's an edge. This is where the threshold comes in. If the edge weight is greater than the threshold, we'll make it white or 255 for white. And if it's less than this threshold, which I initially set to 20, but we can play around with that when we run the program. If it's less than that, then it'll just be black. 
It'll be black background, the black background. So that's what we're going to do with the edge weight values with this if else statement to set all the pixel weights. And then we're going to set the pixel weight according to what we decided up here. So set RGB um, at the point XY, the coordinate XY on our image, on edge image, to value P. And that's it. After we get through these nested for loops, we'll have calculated the vertical edges, the horizontal edges, and then the kind of, you could call it a composite edge weight that factors in both of those. And then we had an if to decide whether it should be black or white based on what we calculated. Lower values are going to be black background and white values will be white. And then we're going to return the image and that's it. So if we save that and then run it, we should see some edge detection. Now there's two different parameters I'll tell you right now that we could play around with. One is this threshold and two is the amount of blurring that we do. So let's take a look at our result with, um, with this compile and run this. Okay, so uh, in case you haven't seen the original image, that's the original image. Here's our our first result, and that's with not much blur at all, right? And also with a threshold of 20. So we can, we can tweak the threshold, and we can also play around with um, additional blur. So let me... I, put some statements in here that I've already played around with. You can comment out the original blur and uncomment the blur blur, or you can comment out the blur blur and, and uncomment the heavy blur and try out our new 5x5 five five heavy Gaussian blur and see how those things affect the result. And you can also do both call blur blur twice and then call the heavy blur function and then it'll, that'll really blur the image a lot uh, and then apply edge detection to that and you'll see it removes a lot of the noise from the image and that's what we want. We want to remove the noise from the image and just get the core lines that are uh, key to the image. And I've already done this. So I'm going to show you the result here. This is with no blur with the threshold at 20. So you see there's a lot of noise in that image with a blur, a very slight blur, right, with just one function call to the blur function with a threshold of 20. It gets rid of a lot of the noise, but there's still a ton of noise. When we call blur function twice, we get this image. Heavy blur gives us this, which is it's constantly improving, right? We're just getting more facial features and less background noise. And then with heavy blur plus the blur function twice and a threshold of 20, we get this. So now we're really just getting down to the image of the person, the, sh the outline of the person, with very little background noise. And then if we play around with the threshold, well, if we bump the threshold up to 30, you can see a nice improvement in our image here. So this is edge detection. It's a critical function for machine learning and artificial intelligence, especially for image processing and, and uh, feature recognition in images. So in future videos, we'll explore that. I hope this video was helpful for you. All the code is available on my GitHub site. Download the code, run it on your own images, play around with it, uh, adjust the settings, and feel free to tweak anything you want. This is here for you to learn from it. Stay tuned for my next video. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.